Okay, so today I will be doing a wrap-up video. So at the beginning of the year, I committed to uh, reviewing every single book that I read or every single book that I'll talk about on this channel, giving it a dedicated review. I've had several people request that I start doing wrap-ups again because uh, some people just don't want to watch a review for a book that they've never heard of. So wrap-ups are little condensed reviews that uh, help people decide if they want to learn more about a book, which makes sense to me. So I'll try out doing wrap-ups again. We'll see if you guys like it. Still doing dedicated reviews for everything if you're into reviews. I guess I'm just trying to do both for people who like one or the other. To keep it a little bit more interesting, I'm also going to be doing a giveaway at the end of this video. And if I keep wrap-ups on my channel, I'll probably be doing this every month. Uh, so I'll do anybody that watches this video and wants to participate, I'll have a Google form at the in the description of this. So uh, you can, I'll send you one of, well, not one of my books because I annotate them, but I'll, I'll send one winner a book from this wrap up. You can choose which one you like. Before we get into my little mini reviews for the books that I read slash didn't finish this month, I just want to highlight Monstrous Waters. This is a collection of short stories by my wonderful friends over on my Patreon. We have a lot of writers over there and they all got together and created this writing group where now I think quarterly they're coming together to write a collection of short stories on a specific theme and all the money raised through these short story collections are going to a charity this time they've chosen the dave thomas foundation for adoption and the basic theme of this one is that in the summertime monsters come out and it has a lot of different tropes and themes that they're playing with in the different stories it looks awesome i've already ordered my copy I'm just highlighting it here in case you want to check it out as well. There will be more information on it in the description of this video. Oh, also, also, I'll mention that this video is sponsored by Squarespace. From websites to online stores to marketing tools to analytics, Squarespace is an all-in-one platform that helps you to build your website and grow your business. But we'll talk more about them at the end of the video. Books I read this month. Okay, so first we'll talk about the one that I didn't read, and that's Half a King by Joe Overcrombie. I was really excited about this book because I love Joe's work. I love his books. I love his character work. And I, you know, pirates, nautical things. Um, this is, I, I don't really have a lot to say, actually. I got about a quarter of the way through it. It's not even that long. And I was still in the basic setup and I just didn't care. Um, Joe Abercrombie's character work is, the way he writes his characters really resonates with me. I connect with it, I eat it up, I love it. I love his dialogue. I love his worlds. Um, you know what? This one just wasn't doing it. This society, this kingdom really looks down on him for not being able-bodied and not being able to do what they think a king should be able to do. Um, his father and brother die, which means he inherits the throne far sooner than he ever could have imagined and just super wasn't prepared for it. People don't believe in him. Now he's off on an expedition. And I don't know. I just couldn't be bothered. I'm not I'm not permanently quitting on this. I might come back to it eventually. Um, no, I think I will. I think I'm definitely at least going to see this one book through in this trilogy. Um, I actually buddy read this. Well, <laughs> was supposed to buddy read this with my friend Lynn. She saw it through. She didn't care for it, but she did say that the character work gets better. Uh, pretty much anything that Joe Abercrombie writes, it doesn't matter if the plot isn't gripping me right from the start, the characters do. And <laughs> that just was not the case for this one. Also, the blurb on this by George R.R. R. Martin says, a fast-paced tale of betrayal, revenge, grabbed me from page one and refused to let me go. George, you lied. This was not an interesting setup. That was not an interesting start to the story. But I do actually have, I do have a lot of faith in Joe Abercrombie, so I'll come back to it eventually. I just don't have a lot of time to be reading right now, so what I do read... I, I want to love it, which is going to be really inconsistent once I get to one of the books in this pile. First book I finished this month was The Bone Shard Daughter. This was a Patreon buddy read from last month that I didn't get to because I don't have a lot of time to read right now. So it dipped into this month and oh my goodness, was it so good. So this has five uh, POVs, um, but there are two main ones, and only one of them is really talked about on the description of the book, if I'm remembering correctly. So this kingdom, this land, this world is set up um, that the emperor is the only one that practices bone shard magic. And bone shard magic is 
this the thing that they've set up where uh, each person in the kingdom has to, is forced to give a shard of their bone behind their ear to the kingdom. So the king can use it to create these constructs, which are kind of like a, a cre like a Frankenstein sort of thing <laughs> is kind of the imagery that you can, you can look at. And it's powered by the bone shards. Um, the, the magic wielders, the emperor, can um, write these very simple or very complex commands on the bone shard and insert it into, into the construct, and then the construct can guard the kingdom, spy on the people, etc. Uh, but using the bone shard magic depletes the life, <laughs> essentially, from the people that are it, that their bone shard is being used. They get what's called shard sickness, and it could be something very mild, but then it could also escalate to the point of being in a sick bed or dying. So naturally that causes a lot of strife and a lot of problems within the kingdom. One of our perspectives is Lin, who has, who is the emperor's daughter and is supposed to be training up to become the next emperor, but she's lost a lot of her memories and the emperor refuses to train her until she can regain her memories, but she needs she needs to have to learn how to use this magic if she's ever going to be able to become the emperor. She's also fighting with her foster brother, uh, competing with him for the throne. Then we also have the perspective of a smuggler uh, within the kingdom and uh, we have five different perspectives, but Lynn is the main perspective talked about on the description. I would say that this story was very, the, the prose was very, uh, simply written, very easy to just dive into and read at a really fast pace, even though I read it very slowly because time. I wouldn't call the world immersive at all, and I really hope that that's something that the author improves on in the second book because I would really love to be able to be fully immersed in the story to really feel the world and taste it and touch it. You know, I really like very um, atmospheric stories, and this book wasn't that. I think the character work was very good, especially with every character but Lynn. The magic was so interesting and the basic setup of this story, when you're in it, it feels kind of like, oh, okay, I've been here before. This feels familiar, but it takes turns and it goes in directions that I wasn't expecting. And I'm just, I'm so happy with it. I loved and adored this book. Next book I finished was Piranesi. And this is a, I would say fantasy mystery you could probably call it sci-fi mystery as well. Sci-fi fantasy mystery? How many genres can we cram into one tiny little book? I'm gonna give you a very small setup for this because I really don't think that it would be beneficial to know a lot going in. So the basic setup for this is we follow a character named, well, called Piranesi, and he's in a house that, uh, it's rooms upon rooms upon rooms, ever changing, ever moving. He is exploring the house. He has this sort of reverence for the house. Um, and there's only one other person in the house. He calls him the other. And the other seems to have resources and knowledge that Piranesi doesn't have, but Piranesi and the other have a very good relationship and Piranesi trust him. And they are both trying to understand the house better and solve certain mysteries. And it's a very slow unraveling. It's a very atmospheric book. Prose is beautiful. Um, Piranesi is just a delight to read from. And it was one of those books that as soon as I finished it, I just wanted to turn back around and read it again. It felt so lovely to read, but also I really just enjoyed watching things fall into place. I can't say that everything was a surprise to me. I definitely did call some of the stuff, but I'm fine with it. It was a delight to read and I would love to read it again now knowing what I do, what, what, I, what I do now. Plus it's a soft magic system and I think it's my favorite way that I've ever read a soft magic system. I loved it so much. I loved this book so much. I do have a dedicated review for both of these. They are spoiler free. So if you want to go more in depth with me on these books, get a little bit more information on them, go check out that review. Next book I finished this month was The Maidens. And ha, I did finish this because it was one of my server, Discord server buddy reads and I would have felt bad if I didn't finish it, but he did not like it. So the setup for this one is we follow a woman named Mariana and she and her late husband have uh, kind of, kind of sort of adopted. I mean, they haven't technically adopted, but they consider this girl to be their adoptive daughter. She's off at university. A murder happens. It's someone close to, to uh, Mariana's adoptive daughter. So she 
takes a break from her job, she's a group therapist, and she goes to be there for her adoptive daughter, and because of course, this has the very basic setup of a team of detectives that are absolutely useless. So our even more useless protagonist decides, I'm gonna solve the murder mystery for you. And so she starts investigating this, uh, this string of murders with her amateur sleuthing skill, except that she has none. So she just makes gross assumptions, targets one person, and really intensely tries to prove that it's him, makes really dumb decisions all throughout the book, just, just unpleasant to read from the perspective of. There's a group of maidens, which is just a group of really, um, very attractive young girls that are kind of obsessed with the professor, and the professor seems to have kind of an unhealthy relationship with the girls, and he's the one that Mariana's really focused on, which, I mean, he, it's fine, he is a creep. This story had so much potential, I really was excited. Like, there was one point in this book that I got so hyped, and I told Corey, I was like, oh, I think I know what he's doing, and if I'm right, this book could be amazing if he could pull it off. And do you know he didn't pull it off? I hated this book. It, it, not only was the protagonist painful to read from, but the reveal was such a convoluted mess that just, it just didn't work out for me. A lot of people did like this book, so, you know, don't only take my word for it, check out what other people are saying, but big swing and a miss for me. This month I've also been doing a reread of the beginning of One Piece, so I'm pretty sure, I'm actually not positive, but I'm pretty sure I've reread the first three sagas this month. So that's, oh my goodness, I don't even know. That's the first 300 chapters. It has been a reread, so it's been a lot faster, and it has been a delight. Y'all know at this point, I have really fallen in love with the series. Family, adventure, emotions, laughs. I've had a wonderful time. And finally, the book that I'm currently reading at the time that I'm filming this, but hopefully will be done with by the time you watch it, is The Lies of Locke Lamora. I'm doing a read-along for this book on my channel, and of course I started the read-along at just about the most busy time for me in a long time. So <laughs> by the time I got done with all of my buddy reads, it was the end of the month and I still hadn't started the read-along book. But I've started it now, and let me tell you, being back in the story has been an absolute delight. I adore Scott Lynch's prose. He, the way he writes this book, it feels like I'm reading a classic, but something that is so different. It's, it has this very dark and gritty humor. I guess I'll, I'll pitch it to you this way. It's a group of orphans that are being raised up to be liars and swindlers and thieves, and they get themselves into all kinds of shenanigans, like thievery, but also like this massive heist that they're in way over their heads. Um, it's hilarious. The humor is exactly what you would expect for this type of people. Uh, it's not, it's kind of a dark world. It's kind of, it just for me, it's, it's the perfect book. <laughs> And I know, like, a lot of people read this book and absolutely adore it. A lot of people read this book and it doesn't fit for them. I get it. It's very, uh, Scott Lynch's writing style is very unique to him and it fits me so well. I think his prose is gorgeous. I think his character work is phenomenal. I love the relationships that he builds. This plot is just a blast. The world is fun to be in, but I would never want to be there in real life. I have enjoyed sinking myself back into this story so, so much. I should have a review for this book up this week. So this video should be up on a Tuesday. Lies of Locke Lamora should probably be up on a Wednesday or a Thursday. So hopefully we'll get a long discussion video where we can all just chat and you can hear me gush because I love this story so much. If you don't know, the Gentleman Bastard series, Lies of Locke Lamora is the first book in the series and the Gentleman Bastard series is my favorite series of all time. I highly recommend it. So um, I'm going to have a giveaway in the description of this video. You can pick a book to to have sent to you. Um, I'll just grab this one. I'm currently reading my other version of this book so that this one can stay on my shelf for filming. 
but for visual purposes, here you go. You can pick any of these books that I read this month. I'll also put Monstrous Waters in the giveaway in case you want that. This giveaway will be open internationally, so have at it. Let me know if you enjoy bringing wrap-ups back, or if you don't, that's cool too. But now that we're done talking about these books, an ad. <laughs> I am the Wicked Witch of the West, and I have an intense hatred for squirrels. But because of my green tones, people don't seem to take me seriously. So, through Squarespace, I have been able to create a website displaying my hatred for all squirrels. Through Squarespace's blogging tool, I can have regular updates. Each time I meet a new squirrel in the wild, I can take its picture and upload it to my website instantly and write really rude things about it. <laughs> I can share stories, photos, videos, and updates, categorize, share, and schedule my posts to make my content work for me. And with Squarespace's email campaigns, I can send those mean posts right to your inbox so that you too can finally see why squirrels are evil and monkeys rule. Join me in my quest to destroy all squirrels and join me in creating Squarespace websites. They're easy to use and wonderful to manage. So go to squarespace.com to try out your free trial now. And if you use the link in my description, you can save 10% off your first website or domain. Don't be a sissy witch. Be an evil witch like me. Anyway, thanks for hanging out with me. I hope you'll check out some of the dedicated reviews for these books if any of them sound interesting now that you've had a quick review for them. Be sure to chat with me more in the comments if you've read them and you want to discuss them, if you plan on reading up any of them. Check out my Patreon if you feel like it. We have tons of buddy reads over there and we have generally just a really good time. I post videos every Tuesday through Friday. I'll see you again soon. Bye.